All right, welcome back. So we're going to start off this video um, the same way. Uh, so so we're going to verify that I uploaded the last video. I think I did. Um, I remember um, I remember doing this, but I'm just going to double check here. It looks like I got another subscriber, so I'm up to 40. Thank you very much for everyone interested in um, my progress here. So let's move over to the uh, channel section, my channel, and let's go down to videos. Okay, and then let's open up my notes and make sure that everything matches. So one thing I'd really love to do is copy this from my personal drive to my uh, drive for this channel, but I'm not sure how to do that. Oh, I'm not even sure how to open this folder apparently. I thought you just needed to double click on it, but that doesn't appear to be a double, a uh, effective strategy anymore. Okay, so it looks like when I double click on this folder, it opens up this here. Um, and well, now it doesn't do anything. Uh, what if I what if I click on it and then hit enter? Okay, that has no effect either. Um, what if I right click on it and then click? Uh, Okay, so for some reason, uh, this folder is refusing to open. Uh, I've never had this happen to me before. Um, it, it looks like my internet connection is totally fine. I, I know there can be issues with uh, Google Drive if, if you don't have an internet connection. Uh, it's kind of a miracle of, of the internet that you can actually use it without an internet connection. But um, Okay, perfect. So now I just need to refresh it. So let's uh, okay. So let's take a look at uh, traffic engineering again. So yep, this is the last topic, IGP dash BGP, which is a knob that adds your INET dot three routes over to your uh, INET dot zero table. Okay, so yep, that was a third video. We can see I've got three videos downloaded, or sorry, uploaded. All right, so let's move on to the next topic, which is going to be administrative groups. Okay, so we've got the uh, notes file. Um, so let's make the title and the tags, all that might not have BGP tag for this one. So here's uh, the title. Uh, we're going to need to find new information. Uh, all of these tags look like they're going to be pretty good. Uh, oh, maybe the troubleshooting isn't the best tag, but they're they're all pretty relevant. So let's um, keep the tags the way they are. Let's see if I can clear formatting. It looks like I got a different size cursor. Perfect. And then let's do the the classic thing I always do, which is open up help apropos and try to use that. I'm going to expand myself a bit. There we go. And uh, we've got GNS open now. Perfect. Here it is. So I've got this topology here, which is kind of a interesting topology. And last time we saw there were issues with uh, 
summarization uh, here. Um, I'm not sure what the problem with that was, but just for looking at help apropos information, there's not going to be any issues. But if I were to do something larger, such as configure administration administrative groups for um, MPLS, I might run into issues at that time. I gotta adjust my desk. It's here. I don't even need to stop the video. Oh, okay, yeah. Somehow, there we go. Perfect. Somehow my desk got nudged. And if it's nudged, I can't. Uh, I can't lower it as far as I need to. Okay, so let's do a help apropos dot pipe match help topic pipe match and then we'll do admin. So this looks like it. Uh, oh, it looks like we've got two matches here. We've got we've got admin groups We've got admin group, we've got admin groups with an S, and we've got admin group but no admin groups for RSVP. So let's just uh, put those in the notes. Okay, and then one by one, let's go and read those out loud. After I clear the formatting, I've also got an issue here where it's double spaced. Um, I did not uh, do anything to, to make it double spaced, so I'd like to find a way to um, have it be single spaced again. Uh, let's search for that. So, uh, Google. Docs double space. Yeah. So data trim white space. Uh, I'm saying anything that says data. Maybe edit file. Um, hmm. Tools. Ah, format. Maybe that's it. Line spacing. Ah, here we go. Maybe this will do it. Yep, that was it. So it was, it was because it was preventing single lines. Uh, that's why it was adding extra uh, spaces. So it's just going to be format line spacing, prevent single lines. Uh, that's what I did to get the results I wanted. Um, so it looks like it, it remained checked. The, the check mark did not go away, but the end result that I was looking for, uh, thankfully did, did happen the way I wanted it to. Okay, so I'm gonna Start by reading this one. I might tear down the lab and uh, if there's a good example here, uh, string that up to poke around with. Ideally, I'd be able to just take any topology, like especially the one I have now, and get it to work, but, or at least understand why it won't work as is. All right, but this is configuring the intermediate and egress routers for static LSPs. Intermediate and egress routers perform similar functions. They modify the label that has been applied to a packet. An intermediate router can change the label. An egress router removes the label if the packet still contains a label and continues forwarding the packet to its destination. To configure static LSPs on intermediate and egress routers, include the interface statement so interface interface name all um, so here's the admin group um, 
and you can configure it at these hierarchy levels. For the label dash map statement, the next dash hop, reject, discard, and pop swap statements are required. The remaining statements are optional. Each statement within the interface statement consists of the following parts. Criteria to use to analyze the labeled packet. Two criteria are are used. Okay, so each each of these each statement uh, within the interface statement consists of the following parts. Criteria to use to analyze the label packets. Two criteria are used. The interface on which the packet was received, specified in the opening interface statement itself, and the packet's label specified in the label map pack. Okay, so this, this works so that um, there, there's two main parts. The first part is what you want something to happen to, and the second part is what you want to happen. So the first part, what you want something to happen to, actually requires two inputs. It requires the port you want something to happen on, and even more specifically than that, it requires the label of the traffic moving through that port so that your actions will be applied specifically to that label. I don't think you can apply it to all labels. You just can apply it to a specific label. I, I'm not sure about that though. And then, so if we think about that, we think, okay, this is what we want uh, our things to happen to. We want it to happen to the interface. We want it to happen to the label. It makes sense that, that what this admin group is, is just multiple groups of things that we can choose because instead of instead of saying I want this to happen to a particular interface a particular label and then having to go through every single interface and label you want it looks like instead you can say all these interfaces all these labels are in my admin group and then when you say I want this to happen to you don't have to say that you know a hundred times for each interface and, and label you can just say I want this to happen to my admin group. But it looks like even though your admin group can bring together different elements that you want to configure, you still need to provide a label map in order to configure them. So you can't include the label part, that second part, that second input in the first part in your admin group. It, it appears as though that is true. And then of course the second part, first part being things you want stuff to happen to, that second part being stuff you want to happen, we get changing the class service value, we get changing the next hop, we get uh, rejecting or discarding traffic, popping or swapping labels, preference settings, um, popping and pushing. So it all, it all definitely uh, aligns with this first part, which is criteria to use to analyze the label packet. Two criteria are used, the interface on which the packet was received, specified in the opening interface statement itself, and the packet's label specified in the label map statement. The next hop statement, which supplies the IP address of the next hop to the destination, the address is specified as the IP address of the next hop or the interface name for point-to-point -point interfaces only, or address and interface name to specify an IP address on an operational interface. When the specified next hop is on a directly attached interface, this route is installed in the routing table. You cannot configure a LAN or non-broadcast multi-access interface as a next hop interface. Okay, so that's that's the next hop statement. So next is the operation to perform 
on the labeled packet. For egress routers, remove the packet's label altogether. Pop. For intermediate routers only, exchange the label for another label. Swap out. Swap out label. Discard the packet, sending an ICMP unreachable message to the packet's originator. Reject. Discard the packet without sending an ICMP unreachable message to the packet's originator. Discard. Label properties to apply to the packet. All are optional. Preference value for this route. Preference, preference. For intermediate routers only, the COS value to apply to the packet. Class of service, COS value. You can specify any number of label map statements at the edit protocols MPLS interface interface name hierarchy level. The static routes are installed in the default MPLS routing table MPLS.0 and the creating protocol is identified as static. To verify that a static route is properly installed, use the command show route table MPLS.0 protocol static. The following is an example of the output. All right, so here's an example to configure an intermediate router. For packets labeled 1000123 arriving on interface SO000, assign the label 1000. 456 and transmit them to the next hop router at 12.2.2.2. Okay. To determine whether the static intermediate route is installed, use the following command show route table and PLS protocol static. The following is a sample of the output, the swap. 100456 keyword identifies the route. Example configuring an egress router. For packets labeled 100456 arriving on interface SO000, remove the label and transmit the packets to the next hop router at 13.3.3.3. Okay. To determine whether the static egress route is installed, use the following command, the show route table MPLS.0 protocol static. The following is a sample of the output. The pop keyword identifies the egress route. Okay, so let's try that command. I don't think I'll have any outputs um, because I don't have a static LSP, but we will find out. Yep. So I, I don't have any any uh, output, and it's not that I have a don't have a static. Oh no. Yeah, it is a static LSP. See, the the thing is, I thought there actually might be some output because I thought I did have a static LSP. Yeah, I thought this was a a static LSP here. I guess I'm not sure what this would be if it's not a static LSP. Um, but uh, let's uh, continue on to the next one. Before doing that, though, I will mark this as complete. All right, so time for the next one. All right, administrative groups, also known as link coloring or resource class, are mutually assigned attributes that describe the color of links such that links with the same color conceptually belong to the same class. You can use administrative groups to implement a variety of policy-based LSP setups. Administrative groups are meaningful only when the constrained path LSP computation is enabled. You can assign up to 32 names and values in the range 0 through 31, which define a series of names and their corresponding values. 
the administrative names and values must be identical across all routers within a single domain. Note the administrative value is distinct from the priority. You can configure the priority for an LSP using the priority statement. See configuring for priority and preemption for LSPs. To configure administrative groups, follow these steps. Define multiple levels of service quality by including the admin groups statement, admin groups group name, group value. You can include this statement at the following hierarchy levels, edit protocols and PLS, edit logical systems, logical system name, protocols and PLS. The following configuration example illustrates how you might configure a set of administrative names and values for a domain. So this is in the edit protocols and PLS hierarchy. We've got admin groups and we've got the options between gold, silver, copper, and best effort. Define the administrative groups to which an interface belongs. You can assign multiple groups to an interface to include the interface, include the interface statement. You can include this statement at the following hierarchy levels, edit protocols and PLS. And then I, I tried using logical systems in my home lab, it just didn't work. If you do not include the admin group statement, an interface does not belong to any group. IGPs use the group information to build link state packets, which are then flooded throughout the network, providing information to all nodes in the network. At any router, the IGP topology, as well as administrative groups of all links, is available. Changing the interface's administrative group affects only new LSPs. Existing LSPs on the interface are not preempted or recomputed to keep the network stable. If LSPs need to be removed because of a group change, Issue the clear RSVP session command. Configure an administrative group constraint for each LSP or for each primary or secondary LSP path. Include the label switched path statements. Okay. Okay, so when we make our label switch path, um, we can uh, use the admin groups. Oh, we can also put it under primary, secondary, and that sort of thing. You can include the label switch path statement at the following hierarchy levels, edit protocols and PLS. If you omit the include-all, include-any, or exclude statements, the path computation proceeds unchanged. The path computation is based on the constrained path LSP computation. For information on how the constrained path LSP computation is calculated, see how CSPF selects a path. Note changing the LSP's administrative group causes an immediate recomputation of the route, therefore the LSP might be rerouted. Okay, so that was definitely the key resource. Um, it's going to be important to come back to that because it really spoke to the issue. So I'll do a star next to it. Oops. Uh, okay, okay. They're either going to let me do that. So I'll do a star next to it and then I will strike it through and we'll go to the next one. Okay, so now this is bypass LSPs. So this is configuring administrative groups for bypass LSPs. Administrative groups, also known as link coloring or resource class, are manually assigned attributes that describe the color of links, such that links with the same color conceptually belong to the same class. You can use administrative groups to implement a variety of policy-based LSP setups. You can configure administrative groups for bypass LSPs. For more information about configuring administrative groups, see configuring administrative groups. 
To configure administrative groups for bypass LSPs, include the admin group statements. Admin group, yep. To configure an administrative group for all of the bypass LSPs, include the admin group statement at the following hierarchy levels. Got it. To configure an administrative groups for a specific bypass LSP, include the admin group statement at the file following hierarchy levels. So this is going to be different than the first one. Uh, the first one is just edit protocols RSVP interface interface name link protection. But this is going to be edit protocols RSVP interface interface name link protection bypass bypass name. Okay, so I think that's all the reading I'm going to need to do for now. Um, I'd like to go to the lab and uh, try to set up a um, administrative group in order to configure my LSP. Uh, let's go to the autonomous system on the right and see if I'm still having those issues where the BGP neighbor won't come up. Yep, so it's still active. Um, so let's see if I'm still having the issues on P1 where, P, or sorry, P5 where the OSPF route is constantly blinking into and out of the routing table. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Yep, every three seconds, so we can see it was not in there, but now it is in there, so, uh, yep, and now it's not in there. We can see it refreshed, but there's no results. Now it is in there, so, yep, it, it's still uh, blinking in and out of the table. If I do a monitor start, uh, and then I go OSPF tissue, we'll see uh, we'll see what's happening. So I think that's probably enough. Um, so let's look through here. It looks like this word expire was interesting to me because that seems to be what's happening. It's expiring from the table. You know what, let's run that again, but let's do a pipe match, 10.255.0.7. So this is really interesting because it says that it's a stub. Um, so I wonder if I might have accidentally um, configured OSPF incorrectly on these. I used OSPF uh, area zero. Yeah, because we see we've got this type stub here, which is uh, not what I was expecting at all. All right, so yeah, let's see. Oh, you know what? You know what? I think I know what the problem is. So the problem is that it can't tell that it's two different OSPF area zero instances, one for each AS. It thinks it's just one big OSPF area. So that's going to be pretty easy to absolve. All I will need to do is remove this link from the link state database. So on router one, that's going to be G002. So if I do a show configuration protocols OSPF, I can display set. Um, yep, you can see I've got all of them. Uh, that's not going to work. I'm going to need to have uh, 002 removed.
Okay, so we've got um, we've got that removed. So we're going to need to do the same thing on P2. Okay, and well, there was one interesting extra command on P1. That's this passive traffic engineering remote node command. That's, I believe, the command that's going to share the traffic engineering database across the autonomous system. So we will need to put a command like that on there eventually to have an end-to-end -end LSP. But for now, the most important step is uh, separating the two IGP areas. Okay, so that should take care of the problem. Uh, we should no longer see that uh, blinking out of in and out of instance, it, the, the, that route blinking in and out of the routing table, and we should be able to see that the area is no longer a stub area. Okay, so let's do a... Yep, so I, I bet you I'll get no hits for this. Um, yep, it looks like it rolled over here without any hits. Um, so let's uh, wait for another rollover, um, see if there's a hit. Uh, I'm surprised it's not... Uh, I'm surprised it's not creating a new one. Okay, yeah, there we go. There we so let's see if there's a roll over, or if there's a hit. Um, so it usually doesn't take super long, so it probably won't take much longer than this. So let's do a monitor stop. And now let's uh, go back to the command to check. Yeah, so let's do this. And uh, we'll check every three seconds. Oh, so it looks like we got it. Now, one thing that's interesting is we didn't have it before, so. Maybe it just took a little bit of time. Nope, so now, so it's still blinking in and out of the, the table again. Okay, well the good news about that is if it's blinking in and out of the table, um, it's going to show up in this command. I just didn't leave it running long enough. So I'm going to leave it running for plenty long and take a, a break that'll last a minute or so. All right, I am back, and we've got some messages now, so I will stop the uh, monitor and uh, look at those message closer, messages closer. So it looks like it's adding a stub route. Which is interesting, I don't know why it's doing that. All right, so let's do a Google search for that. It's gonna be uh, Juniper OSPF stub route. Mm. Yeah, and let's, let's see why, why this is a stub area. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. You have to include this stub statement. And not only that, the backbone area cannot be a, a stub area. Um, I'm going to try uh, removing uh, the command that shared the traffic engineering database uh, because that might be doing things that are that I find really strange. So show configuration, bucket space set, apply no more. Configure private, delete protocols, OSPF area zero, two, zero, pass. Okay. All right, and let's see if that changes anything. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to take a look at the OSPF database here and make sure that 
Um, okay, so this this is interesting. I wasn't expecting. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this to be in there. Oh, and I definitely wasn't expecting these to be in there. Let, let's try clear OSPF database and see if if that changes things. Okay, but it's still it's still behaving in a way I'm not expecting. Okay, so we've got we've got it disabled on two. Got a bunch of extra stuff on this one. I'm gonna strip some of that away. Alright, what else can I strip away on here? Um, hmm, okay, so... Uh, I think I'm going to strip away the export policy for EBGP just because it, I think it might prevent the clashing with the routes. Okay, so I'm going to strip away all of this. I'll probably do it on the other side as well. Yeah, I'll do it on the other side. Open this one up to see if I can get the uh, blinking to go away. So it looks like I was only successful on opening P2. Alright, now I've got P5 as well. So let's get that blinking to show up again. Refresh every second. Okay, so yep, now it's gone. Now it's there, so it's blinking. Okay, so we've got an export policy on this side as well. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so we've got, uh, oh, yeah, so let's see, we've got some changes here. So let's see if they have led to the desired outcome. They have not. You can see it's no longer in there. Now it is in there. So let's take a look at the monitor command again.
Um, and I'm going to do this actually. I'm going to shut down that link entirely. Okay, and we'll see if it if it still blinks. Um, or if it still considers um, it a stub route. So I don't understand why this type 3 stub is showing up there, um, because I did not configure it as a stub. Okay, so here we've got output that shows this. I don't see any explanation of that. Now, why is it being shown as a stub route? Because it's passing? I thought. I thought a stub route was... Oh. Oh, you know what? It's, it's because it has no... It's because it has no adjacency. Yeah, that, that might be it. Maybe, maybe because it has no adjacencies. Nope, it's got two adjacencies. <sighs> Why does it think it's a stub route? Now this is something I find interesting here. I've got the same ID for both of my neighbors. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we've got that five. So let's see what the uh, ID is for the other neighbor. Okay. 
plus 6. All right, so yeah, I guess I'm not sure why the ID is dot 5 for both of them. Uh, but I do have two neighbors. Let's see if I've still got the issue with it blinking in and out. So now it's out. And now it's in. So yep, I've still got the blinking issue. Um, you know what? I'm going to try this. Let's try making this a stub area and see what happens. Oh, but you see, this is where it gets really weird. You can't make a area zero a stub area. Yeah, if I go up area through zero one, and I do set question mark. Yep, see, I've got an extra option down here for stub, so it's not even possible for. Uh, that message to show up saying that there's uh, something to do with a stub area because everything's in area zero so it, it's impossible to have area zero be a, a stub area yeah this is area zero This is area zero. And this is area zero as well. Uh, I'm just gonna try to, to strip it down into its basics um, just so it's, it's a simpler configuration. It's more what I'm used to looking at. See which interface it's got to go on. It's got to go on zero. Okay. Okay, so that should be a much simpler interface to look at. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be number one. Perfect. All right, so let's see if we've got that blinking problem some more. Okay, so I guess there's some good news. We don't have the blinking problem anymore, um, but that might just be because I forgot to include uh, loopback zero. So let's do that. Maybe it's because I didn't make them passive interfaces. Um, I, I'm going to start them as, as passive interfaces. If everything works perfectly, um, I can always try and remove that passive knob and see if the blinking issue comes back.
Okay, so we've got uh, everything good to go. Let's see if the blinking issue is still there. Okay, so just like, oh, ah, so now we've got the blinking issue back. Yep, so it should blink into existence again. There we go. Now it blinked out of existence. So it's definitely less frequent. Um, but yeah, I don't know why it's blinking like that. Um, let's take a look at uh, monitor start. So that's interesting that there's no information for monitor start, but that's more what I was expecting to see because there's no, um, there's only area zero, which cannot be a stub area. So this is more what I was expecting, not seeing anything to do with stub area, but the fact that they're still blinking is really odd. Okay, now we've got a, a, a database for OSPF, that, that's more what I was expecting to see. Yep, so this is the link state database. Um, and um, it is more what I was expecting. Alright, so, but unfortunately I've only got four minutes until lunch hour's over and I've got a meeting at one. So, um, I think this is going to be it for this video. It's kind of a, a strange video where I really, um, uh, kind of, uh, am dealing with an issue I'm not, sh I've never seen before. I'm not sure how to resolve. I don't even know if it's a real issue. It could just be my lab is, is going nuts. Um, so, uh, yep, I'm going to leave it there. If anyone in the comments knows what I'm looking at, you know, why I would be receiving stub area messages in area zero of OSPF, uh, please let me know. Um, but until then, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.